Good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone. Bean Chow's Garage here and on today's episode we're going to be doing some MK6 coilovers by Raceland. Now this is not sponsored by Raceland at all. We paid full pop for these guys so uh, we're going to be doing an upgrade actually, hopefully an upgrade on my wife's Jetta wagon. Uh, so this car right now is currently on uh, I believe H&R springs with stock struts. So the goal here is to hopefully give the car a little bit better ride and adjustability. Now, the big reason why we went with coilovers is because we have the uh, option to adjust height. And since we do use the wagon a lot for um, pretty much daily everything, we want to have the ability to adjust the height you know, to really low or really high. Not really high, but higher than what we have now to go out and when we take the car out camping, to go on rough terrain. Um, so let's uh, get to work and uh, as always, this is Pinchao's Garage. Get your car on jack stands and you're going to break loose the three 13s that are right here on the top. Um, take off the rubber seal. Don't need to take off this uh, the rain tray at all. Just got to take off the, um, the, the rubber seal, pull this up lightly, and there's one, two, three 13s. Now break them loose, do not remove them. Just got to break them loose. And then when you do that, come down here, and then you got the the bolt here for the tie rod extension here, or not extension, um, for the sway bar end link. And then you got a bolt here uh, for the actual uh, strut. And then there's a 10 mil here to get the brake lines out of the way. And that should be it for your entire uh, brake, uh, removal of hardware. And then we'll show you how to remove the actual um, strut itself. Now take your time. I recommend removing the, uh, the end link first for the sway bar. Uh, it is one of the harder items to remove and then working your way down to everything else. So you're gonna need a 10, an 18, an 18. You guys can see that. Um, so 18, 18, a 10 millimeter, and over here for the triple square, you're gonna need the uh, 14 uh, for your triple square that sits right over here. And that's everything you need to, to actually pull your front suspension out and the 13 on the top. Um, so it all depends on what you have available at your house and how you're going to do it. But I brought all, everything I needed right now. So I got my 14. Get your 18 wrench over here. And just use it to hold it. You don't need to actually spin the wrench side. Just gotta make sure that nut doesn't just spin on you. And then your next step here, once you get that one out, you're gonna grab your 18 deep socket. And try to break that one loose. <laughs> That's the neighbor. So the 18 for this guy make sure you um, break it loose and leave the nut on there that way you don't lose it and then kind of like wiggle it out of the way here. We got this guy done so that one's next. We got our 10 millimeter removed. That was right here. That just allows it to just be out of the way. Um, 
because the next thing is the the third the three thirteens on top. But again, remember the thirteens on top. Do not remove them; just break them loose. The next step is to turn your steering rack over to the right or, or left, and you're gonna use a chisel on the back of this and hit it with a hammer to break it loose, and it'll just drop. So if you guys can see here, um, right here you gotta put your spreading tool. Uh, we're gonna be using a chisel and a hammer. Um, makes it easy. That way you don't have to buy any specialty tools. Uh, you'd be surprised how expensive your, your little spreader tool is, like 30, 40 bucks for a spreader tool when you can just use a chisel and it takes a couple seconds or a couple minutes of hammering. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, my wife right now is turning the car on and turning the wheel to the right. Like that, all the way over. Okay. And then you get the spreading tool or a chisel, hit it with a hammer. Just like that. And it should allow you to drop. Now, if that doesn't allow you to go all the way down, I forgot one thing. We need the three 16s underneath for the uh, ball joint. So we gotta do that really quick before you go all the way down, because if not, you're never gonna get that ball joint out. So you guys can see that I took the ball joint off, it's 3 sixteenths, deep socket, and then push the control arm down. That way you're gonna have all the space you need to drop the coilover all the way down to the ground. And, I mean the strut, and drop it to the ground and then get ready to install your uh, your new one after that. So. Again, with your chisel, find a good spot to put it in, and then smack away. Definitely a good time to turn your volume down. Just so they don't pull on any wire too hard. Keep doing this and it should just drop. So currently, the current issue we're having right now is the, actually the, uh, the dry passenger side coilover or strut. Uh, the sway bar is what's holding the strut up in place right now. So what we're gonna do is remove the uh, driver side suspension and see if this will allow us to make this travel down a bit more. All we need is about two inches of travel. So I'm hoping that by removing the sway bar end link on the other side, this will allow the sway bar to drop a little bit more and we'll be able to get this guy out and install this side first and then work on the other side next. So, what we had to do, again, to make this work, get your both fronts uh, off of the ground, remove the sway bar end link first on both sides before you do anything else. So that's part of the smartest thing I've done today because once you do that, make sure again, you leave at least one of these bolts in here or leave all three at max uh, at torque uh, to torque spec, all you need to do those last before everything else. Um, so what's that going to allow you to do is keep this up here, and all you can do is again with your chisel and hammer, uh, spread the uh, the bottom of it. As you hit up, uh, once you get it spread open decent amount, you can start hitting the uh, the strut here, and it'll just pop right out just like this, and then you can unbolt it from there, um, and then repeat the process on the driver side. It's going to be a lot easier for you on the driver's side since they don't... There we go. So these are actually eye box springs. Um, so a good recommendation for you, depending on the mileage on the car, um, is to get new bearings and bushings for the top, which we did. I got I picked them up at my local AutoZone. We ended up going with Rain Automotive. This is actually a really good brand of spring. I mean, not spring, but purchase. 
And here's the part number, AVQ0262R. Uh, they're about 50 bucks each, and they come with a brand new bearing and bushing. Highly recommended when uh, going to co upgraded coilovers because they'll wear out um, over time. So definitely get those uh, to refresh your suspension. So one side is out. We're going to go do the other side, and then we're going to show you what to do next for the install. All right, so we got the passenger side on. You guys can see that right there. Now it sits a lot higher geometry wise than than the stock ones because the strut itself is a lot shorter. So you guys got to factor that in when you guys are doing your install. Uh, because it actually makes it a lot easier to install because you don't have to worry about trying to cram it in. It actually fits the way it's supposed to fit. Now, what I did is I bought, again, with my new bushings, I installed them. And then I, uh, once I got them torqued down to spec, I uh, put the strut um, spanners, oh, the locking uh, nuts, whatever you guys call these. I forgot what these are called. Uh, as high as I could because again I need to go height wise right now I got to lift my car up once we're back from camping I'm gonna lower it back down um, they sit really short I mean this is really really short in comparison to uh, the factory sh uh, shock sitting about down here so it's pretty pretty intense and in how different they are in terms of uh, install now the thing that's worrying me right worrying me right now is the sway bar end link as you can see right here I still have another two inches maybe three inches of travel before I can even get the bolt into that hole so I'm hoping once I get the other side installed and bend the sway bar not bend it but pull it up it gives me the reach I need if not I think we're gonna be needing extended uh, sway bar end links so I might have to remove the sway bar for the time being um, so hopefully it's not a thing, but we will find out the further uh, in I go into this installation. So right now nothing is bolted down. It's just in there um, by hand because we are not done yet. So we're going to show you how to actually pre-set the coilover before you do your installation. So right here I got my rain bushings with a new bearing in it. Always want to make sure you get new bearings in here. Um, the way that these go, this portion is actually facing up. This is facing down. The rubber bushing sits in here, and that's your. That's pretty much how these mount. Okay. Now these are all pre-greased, so you don't need to be worried about anything about these. You can go grab your front shocks here. Now. Before you install your front struts, let me guys show you a comparison difference from factory to aftermarket in height because it's pretty, pretty ridiculous. So, oh, before that, make your life a little easier. Put that spanner all the way down. Insert. Okay, now we're going to come over here and compare factory struts versus Raceland. And I kid you not, that's about a three inch difference in length. It is pretty crazy the difference and how long they are um, from factory to aftermarket. <clears throat> so the body itself, and that's how it chases and changes is uh, height wise one way, and then you still got adjustment here in the spring. So that's pretty crazy. So right now we're going to torque these down and then uh, we'll show you guys how to install them. So we got that nut installed and then what we're going to do is make sure that this spanner There we go. Just 
keep it going. For me, this is what I am doing for my situation. So I don't know the actual how height calculations for these coilovers. So for you guys, I'd probably go halfway or maybe three quarters, uh, maybe so one quarter of the way down. And then put the car down and see how it sits. If not, take wheels all back off and readjust until you find a spot where you like it. Um, that's pretty much how I would, I would adjust it. On the black race lines and Ultimos, I typically go halfway. Because um, halfway is like just a good fender the tire. Usually about two inches is what I can recall. So always have a tape measure handy for this. Because what you want to do is match the distance from here to here. Uh, from the left and right, that way you're not sitting all sloppy and sideways. So we're exactly actually at two, and we're not almost at two. A couple turns. two now so now what you want to do is you'll see there's some arrows here there's a left and right arrow on here these face towards the front okay towards the front of the car not the back of the car so remember that and then you're gonna put the strut in by hand hold it and then manually install your uh, your bolts so the next step is get your jack, and with your jack, you're going to bring it all the way over to the other side. And then you need to make sure that your lower ball joint is back in the spindle. This is a very important step next, so you guys can get it in. So. annoying because these things like to spin So we got the ball joint installed, partially, and that's what we need to get this sucker going up, because if you don't do that, you're not going to be able to lift this up without having some fun complications, you know, and hurting yourself. This is what you need. This is why you need your jack. So you're not here working too hard. There we go. And you want that sucker go up. Put your bolt in and your big nut. that now the next step here is the end link as you can see we're still about an inch away on this side so I'm hoping if my jack will help us along the way here oh, yeah, a little bit more a little bit more height let me just use the socket and see if this works. Ah, 
Ha, it did work. And then, there you do that. Put your nut on the other side on. And get that hand tightened. That's funny, it actually worked. <laughs> so now we got the sway bar end link installed on this side. Let's go repeat th that same process on the other side. It's like we're another two inches away on this side, so definitely need the help here. hurt me <laughs> try it again but it works it's not the safest thing to do but it works all right so we got the end link installed using that method I just showed you with the jack just be careful that's all I asked for uh, now everything's on here loose so the next step is to tighten everything up and then get down to torque specs and that's just the front and then we got to put the front down and then work on the rear. The rear is ridiculously easy. It takes about like 30 minutes to do the rear. So, but we got to get this all tightened up, buttoned up all right. Uh, make sure everything on the top and bottom. So the three, three, there are three 13s on top. Uh, your M14, 18, 18, 10, and the three 16s down here at the bottom for the ball joint. That's everything on each side. So get that all taken care of and then we'll show you guys what to do next. Right, so we're now on the rear. As you can see, we've already installed it. It's super, super easy. So you're gonna need a 16 on top, a 21 here, an 18 socket and an 18 wrench on the other side to hold it in place. Uh, I recommend doing the spring first and then the shock on the top and then the bottom or just in reverse. Break this one loose. You can break the 21 loose if you can through this little space. If not, again, drop this side. That way the spring comes out and then you can get to this and then those two up there. Um, once you do that, pretty much you got to get ready to preload your whole entire uh, suspension. Set it where you want to set it. Um, I pretty much went all the way flush with the, the perch, uh, flush against the back because I don't know really how high that is. Uh, we're going to match that on the other side as well. And then we'll adjust height accordingly. Um, on these uh, Primo coilovers, they have 15 clicks, so I went 7 clicks uh, from the left to right. Um, so from left is soft, to the right is hard. So I, uh, I went to 7, so it's about halfway. So we're going to show you guys how to remove all this and then install it correctly on the other side as well. So we got our 16 with an extension, our 18 socket wrench, and our 20 to get this all taken care of. Uh, Got to take the wheel off. Um, let me get that wheel off right now. So, first thing you guys got to do is remove the uh, 18 right here on the side. This sucker. And that's going to remove the, uh, the spring right here that's already there. Now, since I'm already on lowered springs, uh, it makes it a lot easier to take this sucker out. What happens is if you have the stock uh, spring in there, there's a lot of tension on this bolt, so it makes it pretty hard to remove the bolt. Now, what you're going to conserve from your stock suspension is the lower spring perch. I'll show you guys that what it is right now in just a moment when we get to that spot. Alright, so that's 
removed. So when you drop your spring, you have an upper perch and lower perch. The lower one is what you remove, the topper one is what you re remove. You can't use this anymore. But that's pretty much your whole spring in the rear. You gotta make sure that this is in place, the lower perch, because this is what's gonna keep the spring aligned down below. But above, we're gonna use the new Raceland uh, perch that goes up here, okay? And then back here on this shock, this is your 21. So you're gonna break that loose. And then right above is a 16. So there's two 16s right above here. Again, your 21, and then your 18, and then 18 and a wrench on the back. That is it for your entire install and removal of your uh, suspension. Next is depending on your factory strut, I have an aftermarket one. We need to remove these, and we have to make, make sure we reuse the shock mount. The, the bumps up and the cover do not get re, uh, reused. They stick with this. Uh, Raceline does provide you with a replacement. There you go. So now on the on these um, shocks right here, go all the way, turn them uh, counterclockwise, and you're gonna count. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen, sixteen. So. One, two, two, three, five, six, and seven. It's about where I want it. So we're going to install the factory uh, uh, bush. Um, mount right here. These use a 17 socket. Torque these to spec. Alright. We got this bad boy installed. Set to 7 clicks. So we're ready to reverse install our uh, strut here. So now the smartest thing to do is to make your way put your little cap back on. I don't know really, really what that's for, but it's there. <laughs> um, put the two bolts on top first, and make sure you put these in by hand. Never, never use a ratchet to uh, start your threads, because you will cross-thread them, because you won't be able to feel if they're going straight or not. Okay? So what we ended up doing, makes it easy for everyone, okay? So, you put your two 16s on top. You put the 21 in for your shock, so that just stays there. Make sure you torque them to spec. And then all we got to do is mount that rear spring and perch. So what I my setting currently right now is flush to the top, just like that. And then this goes down to the bottom of the bottom perch. So just like that, how I have them. What you want to do is though, first put your spring in the rear and make sure the it, stops turning. The reason why it stops turning because there's a bushing down below that has a little stopper that just prevents the bushing from spinning and getting worn but it's just sitting there. And then we're gonna... Like, ow! <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> so now we're here and we're mounted. All we gotta do is get the jack because now this spring's a lot stiffer than the one I was using and it actually uh, the shock is shorter than the factory shock so it's pulling up higher, so it makes it more tension on that spring for you. So you guys can see here, uh, we use the jack to compress the spring. This allows us to align the bolt into the hole, push it all the way through, and then use the nut to lock it in place. Torque it down to spec, and your rear is done. Look at that. Legitimately half an hour per side 
to do the rear. It's so easy. Um, now again, uh, once you have it up in the air, it does allow for some of the spanner wrench to fit in here and you can adjust your height accordingly. I'm going this high due to the fact that I am setting my car because we're going to go camping so we need to be able to go a little bit higher due to a rough terrain and we're going to have a heavy load on the car so I want to make sure that oh excuse me that I'm going to have a stiff enough suspension to be able to go on uh, dirt roads and not damage underneath my car and damage obviously the inside and all this um, for rubbing but once we're back on normal roads I'm going to dump this car again I'll show you guys that later when we actually get to the lowering the car actually uh, since I'm going to be raising it, the car is going to look very, very different. So, we're done with the lowering of the car, or installation of our Raceline oh, uh, Primo coilovers. Now, a couple things you guys got to remember. Torque it down. Put your wheels on slowly. Take your time doing everything. So, from where we're at, the front, again, is loaded almost all the way up. I think I got about like a quarter inch more in the front, and I got about another quarter inch more in the rear. But in comparison to what I had it before, we're about an inch higher than we were. So, this is not bad at all. Again, uh, these will settle, so they will sit a little bit lower. But for our, my scenario right now, they're perfect. They're not too high and they're not too low. Um, we're going to benefit from it, obviously, from going um, from going uh, camping and doing a long haul. Um, so this is going to be perfect for us. We'll see how they do uh, with some weight in them. See how much lower they sit. But I think we're going to be good. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in in this episode of Pinch Out's Garage with Raceland Primo Coilovers. Uh, I will give you guys pretty much a full description uh, what you what other stuff you're gonna need in the description down below and as always if you guys like what we do here please click on the link below the two links are actually one to our merch store and the second one is actually to become a patreon becoming a patreon here at keeping Child's garage means a lot to us because this helps us create content like this uh, believe it or not it's extremely hard and time-consuming to do a lot of this content and unfortunately it's not free uh, yeah support Pinchao's Garage by becoming a Patreon um, because becoming a Patreon allows us to do so much more and there's a lot of perks involved exactly as per the wife he says uh, two perks actually that are huge to Pinchao's Garage number one the Corrado giveaway and the Jetta Ultimate giveaway as well uh, both cars are being given away one exclusive to Patreon and one exclusive just to uh, YouTube in general. So again, click that link below and you guys will get all that information. As always, happy wrenching and we're going to break, fix, and repeat. Peace out everyone and have a wonderful day.